What are we talking about today, Carol? Yeah, what are we going to talk about today? So I thought maybe we should talk a little bit about apples. Okay. It's, it's, it's oh. apple season. Yes. Welcome to the Homestead Podcast. You are joining co-hosts Carol and Jamie of TwoGalsHomesteading.com. If you found yourself here, that means you are ready to take responsibility for what you eat, your family's health, and your family's well-being while living a simpler life. You can do this and have fun, saving money along the way. Let them help you unleash the homesteader within. By doing more with less, you will gain what is needed to create confidence, impact, and change in your life and the lives around you. Let's start homesteading, let's start now. Jamie, what's happening in your kitchen this past week? I'm trying to think. It's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> busy, busy wrapping up the garden. Mm-hmm. We had our first frost. Yes. We talked about that last week that yeah. we were expecting it. Yeah. You were taking precautions. So what did you do? I did, I ended up pulling, I picked all my peppers and pulled the plants. Picked um, probably the, not the end of the tomatoes, but picked all the ripe tomatoes Mm-hmm. With the help of my granddaughter. <laughs> she ate more than I think she picked. Well, that's okay, though. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'm trying to think. What else did we... Oh, herbs. I picked some herbs and brought some herbs in. Okay. The ones that were cold sensitive. All right. I picked those and brought those in and put them in the dehydrator. Okay. Because the freeze dryer is not at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I made apple crisp and pear crisp because I had some leftover pears. Mm-hmm. And then I made a loaf of bread today. Okay. Or two loaves of bread. I have not made bread in probably six months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you were searching through cook- cookbooks. Cookbooks. So you got a, you got a special recipe you no, always use. No, I, I was kind of like, just kind of like, I lost, I lost, I always used the bread recipe off the, that came with my bread machine and I've lost it. Oh, that's so frustrating. I know. So I'm like going, oh, we'll try this recipe. <laughs> and it turned out okay, I think. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you never know with bread. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that was it because it said, I, you know, it said, you know, how it says it's a five, five and three fourths cups flour, two, six and a quarter. And I'm like, I put five and three fourths and I probably didn't need that much. Okay. So what you're saying, the, the flour, yes. is, there's a variable there. Yeah. Because, you know, we're not humid. Are we, our humidity is way down. And mm-hmm. so I did not. I thought, oh, I almost have too much flour in here, I thought. But it still, it didn't taste too heavy, I don't think. Okay. So oh, it's oh. like, it's like you got to play, you got to pay more attention. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how much the weather affects bread, bread. yeast, that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. It sure does to make a difference. Because I know if it's raining, oh, I struggle with bread. Yeah. I struggle if it's raining. So I try not to bake bread. Well, it when was it's it raining. sprinkled, but yeah, it was a you sprinkled. sprinkled. Yeah, and we're also in a drier season right now, yeah. too. If it's raining in the summertime, I can't bake bread. It just does uh, not work for me at all. I don't bake much in the summertime because we don't have air conditioning. And neither do we. And stuff, and so yeah. I, the oven doesn't get a... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get a whole lot of use. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what else I did this week. Oh. I, I have a self-cleaning oven, and uh-huh. I know some people are going to be like, that's very harmful to do that, but... Because I don't have air conditioning, all my windows were open, and everybody's left. I have no pets or anything in the house. Mm-hmm. I open all the windows, turn it on, and mm-hmm. I leave. Mm-hmm. And then it comes back, and it smells funky. But I have enough plants in my house that it oh. clears all the year yeah. in a day or so, and, yeah. and my oven's clean. <laughs> yes, and your oven's clean. Well, that's always a good feeling to have a yep. clean oven, yes. Because yes, yes. <laughs> it gets messy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not one of those that clean it monthly or anything. It's like... Once a year, maybe twice a year. I was going to say, uh, I don't know if mine even gets cleaned once a year. <laughs> I, uh, if I didn't have the self-cleaning function, no, it wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. But I have, I, I, I've had people do, that is so toxic to do that. And I'm like, going. But they say that spray isn't real great for no. you. No. Yeah, oven spray doesn't, isn't you know. anything that terrific either no so. that's got a lot of yeah. chemicals and everything yeah. in it too and yeah. i figured if i'm out of the house all the windows are open mm-hmm. and, and today would have been a really good like today would have been a good day well it was raining off and on but yeah. this is a good time to do that have your windows open because it's not going to get hotter in your house no you know and no actually stuff, kind so. of heated and, and then we came home and i shut all the windows and so the house was kind of warm mm-hmm. yeah so and, and yeah. it's getting chilly at night you know yes it is i'm not sleeping with the windows open you know, I keep a crack in the window as long as I can. <laughs> eventually like, here, we have to give it up, though. <laughs> yeah, eventually you have to shut all the windows and drag out more. I have dragging out more blankets. Mm-hmm. And I've pondered putting the 
electric mattress pad on the bed. Oh, you haven't put that on yet. No, no. no you're lucky you got one of those. We do not have one of those. Oh, only reason I have it because I found it for a, at a garage sale for $5. <laughs> thrifty, thrifty, thrifty. Yep. <laughs> Best five bucks I've ever spent in my life. <laughs> well, let's go back to your gardens and what you were working on. What did you do to protect your plants from the oh, frost? Yes. So I have a crate of sheets, you know, old... You know, mm -hmm. we don't have twin beds in our house anymore, so I have every last twin sheet I've probably <laughs> ever had in my house. Uh -huh. I just drape them over it, like my tomato cages, not cages, but racks, fencing or whatever I use. Mm -hmm. I just drape them over it and close pin them together. Okay. Did it work? Yes. Okay. Cause yeah, even my beans, because okay. I covered beans and thought, eh. Mm. You know, but then I, uh, my garden is in a, a in a really cool spot. My neighbors just south of me has three trees right south of it. Mm -hmm. And then the neighbor to the west has a big elm tree, I think, there too, or ash tree. And it provides just that first frost doesn't seem to hit my garden area. Oh, okay. It kind of protects it. Okay. But now, because it was like right at 33, 34, maybe, mm -hmm. you know. You know, their houses had frost on it, but in that, that area, and it's kind of even a low area, it didn't have frost on it. Okay. But now, if it gets down to 30, it'll kill it. Okay, yeah. And stuff, and I probably have no intention. I'll pick everything and not and try just, to save it. Yeah, we're getting to that. I mean, it's it's October. It's October, yeah. so it's like, yeah, eh, it's I, still have, I still have beets and carrots. They're a little hardier, though. Yeah, so, um, and then, um, and I grew fennel this year mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. I had gotten one this spring and roasted it and loved it. And so I thought, I'm going to grow it. It bolted really quickly when it got hot. Yes. And so I have like six plants that have, I was trying to get the seeds. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, so I have a seed book, how to collect seeds. Mm -hmm. And I opened it this week to say, what do I got to do? These, they would dry out eventually if we had a longer season. So I think what I'm going to do is going to clip off the head Mm -hmm. and then hang them upside down to dry them oh, okay. in a bag, in a paper yep. bag that said. And then it said this was a perennial. Oh. So I may leave one or Just two see. and see if it comes back next year. Okay. So that's what gardening's all about in my world. Yeah, yeah I love perennials. It's like yeah. you plant it and see if it grows yep. again. Yep, see, hope it, hope it comes back. Yeah. Yeah, so. see, now... You think you only got down to like 33. So there were some areas in Minnesota that in our area that got hit harder than that. Because oh. I had a friend over by Hutchinson, which is about an hour west or east of us. She had her stuff covered and it still killed her flowers. She oh. lost all her tomato plants and everything. And she had them covered. She was oh. like, that ended that for me really quick. And yeah. I didn't, we didn't get that cold there yeah, in town. We had, um, we had frost on our pastures. That Rich is like, well, it got a little bit colder than I think they were predicting or whatever. Because, yeah, everything was covered in our our uh, silage cornfield where the cows were grazing. The corn is turning is turning brown right now. now okay. yep, it, it definitely got hit. So it was a little colder than I think some people were expecting. How does that affect your pastures for the cows then? The grass is hardier, so it doesn't bother them so much, but I don't know how much time. I see the cows out in the cornfield, but I don't know if they're actually eating the corn stalks or if they're grazing the grass and, and stuff that's growing in that field, oh, okay. you know, because our, our fields are organic and Rich, Rich is like, we're not going to harvest the corn, so we're just going to let whatever grow, grow out there. They might be just eating grasses and stuff like that, not necessarily the corn. So they still the corn. have corn cobs and everything? No, those were gone a long time ago. That was the first thing they ate. Oh, okay. <laughs> not that there was a whole lot of corn out there, but yeah, you, you'd walk out there and you'd just see that you could tell they munched off the, top the, of the, the corn ear. Cob. Yeah, the top of the, the corn cob. So yeah. Okay, so. So, so what happened in your kitchen this happened week? happened in my kitchen? We did freeze drying in the, in the um, harvest right. We did tomatoes. Oh, there's a learning curve with tomatoes. Yes, I have been reading. Yeah, a friend of mine from a friend neighbor uh, says, I'm done with tomatoes. And it wasn't you. <laughs> and she's no, like, it wasn't me. <laughs> and she's like, I'm done with tomatoes. I need to move on to something else. And so she's like, do you want my tomatoes, what I have left? And I'm like, sure, I'll take them. I don't have any tomatoes, you know. I took them and I cut them all up. I roasted them in the oven. They roasted overnight for me so they would reduce down a little bit. Rich is like, 
well, we probably should get rid of some of this juice. There's a lot of juice on here. And so I just kind of strained them in a slotted spoon, basically, yep. and put them on the trays, threw them in the freezer. It took a while for them to actually pre-freeze. And then we, we put them in the freeze dryer. And I read online, oh, takes 16 hours. I'm like, okay, perfect. We'll get them done in no time. Yeah, the freeze dryer ran for 30 some hours. I think it finished 40 hours. It it uh, finished just before we started this podcast. <laughs> That's a really long time. So I think if I did tomatoes again, I would definitely get rid of as much juice. juice you know, and I know you had said you had read something about the seeds having yeah, the a seeds, lot of moisture hold, in them, holding on to the moisture. And yeah, stuff. and you know, I had like I had taken a lot of the juice. You know, I had a I had a I had a half gallon of juice that had come off of there, and there were seeds in there. But you know, there's a lot of seeds on my trays. I oh, yeah. I wasn't being real picky, and probably should have researched that a little bit better before I tried it, but. You know, it's all a learning curve. That's we'll how learn we something. Learn. <laughs> and you know, I've got now I've got four trays of tomatoes that I can turn into powder or whatever. Yes, but, that's um, what I want to do is turn yeah. it into powder. Then I was um, while we were freeze freeze drying the tomatoes, I had a friend post a story on Facebook, Kelsey, po- and she said, "I'm doing my tomato paste, and this is how you do it." And she had like Roma tomatoes, and she was poking a X with a knife in the bottom with a paring knife. And then she was squeezing the juice out into a bowl. And I was like, well, oh. how genius is that? And then, then, you know, like a day later, she posted her little ice cream scoops full of tomato paste that she had. And I, I, I'm not sure if she was canning it or freezing it. I honestly don't remember, but she had it on a cookie sheet. I thought she was making cookies. <laughs> But tomato you know, cookies. Yeah, it was tomato paste is what it actually was. And I thought, oh, that's genius, you know, to, to, to squeeze the juice. You know, it might not work so much with a like a big boy tomato or something yeah. like that. But with your Romas, Romas and your other paste tomatoes, yeah. that would probably work and quite then, well to get some of the juice out of there. And after all, no, you'd still powderize. And so if you're going to freeze dry it and like, you know, and like in a cookie scoop, if you mm-hmm. use the, like a small cookie scoop is to mm-hmm. mend it. But you're going to powderize it anyway. Yeah, I don't know if that would, that would serve no, any purpose. purpose. No, I would yeah. still smush it out yep. flat as yep. flat as you could. Yeah. Fill the tray. Mm-hmm. But so that's just something to take <clears throat> note of and next year because basically tomatoes are yeah. pretty much done for the season up yeah, here. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to have a whole lot. I have a lot of tomatoes. I'll probably pick the green tomatoes. I have lots mm-hmm. of tomatillas out there yet. Okay. I don't know if it's going to be enough. If they're going to be big enough to do anything with, we'll see. Mm-hmm. I'll probably go out maybe Tuesday and pick whatever's there and say that, call it good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, eventually you just have to just be done. Be done. Yep. You just have to be done. Pick my herbs. Yeah. Let's see. Did we do anything else? Oh, I started, I used a lot of my um, freeze dried goods this week. Oh yeah. I'm, I used the ground beef. Oh, that's right. Freeze dried ground beef and the freeze dried onions. I used them in both or let's see, I made chili, made tater tot hot dish or casserole for those people who are not from Minnesota. I made lasagna and the lasagna, I actually used our freeze dried mozzarella cheese as well. Oh, that's right. So everything turned out really good. I will say a hamburger reconstitutes beautifully. Um, it looks just like I fried it in the pan huh. and, it, and um, you know, it, it worked well. Madison didn't know the difference. Rich, Rich did because he saw me make it, but I mean, it just, it, it worked out really, really well. The only thing Rich told me is that when he ate the leftover tater tot hot dish, it was very dry. I must not have compensated quite enough for the... I suppose that's where the weighing the tray and yeah, stuff. Yeah, maybe. Cause, all you that know, math. Yeah, all that math. Yeah. I maybe should have added a little bit more water than I did to the hamburger to Better, start with. You know, when or, you're doing leftovers, if leftover of reconstituted day two you will have to add maybe just a touch of water maybe but it didn't happen with the lasagna oh because i actually added extra water to the lasagna because i knew my cheese was in there and i figured maybe my tomato sauce was not enough or my spaghetti sauce wasn't Mm. enough moisture so i added a little bit more noodles yes i did okay yep i had i i had um pre-cooked the the noodles so i was just layering and you know and i just i i watered down the um the sauce a little bit when of course took it out of the jar and so i just rinsed it out with a little extra yeah. water to add yeah. that little well, bit of I moisture d- in there be- you know 
It would be interesting because when I make lasagna, I don't cook my noodles. Oh, okay. You just add a little bit extra water. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to, you know, and then I cover it with aluminum and then Mm -hmm. aluminum foil, bake it 45 minutes Mm -hmm. and then take it off. And if it's really soupy, you Mm -hmm. just cook it a little longer. Okay. So now I'm like going, how would I do this? With yeah, because dehy- you, you'd have to compensate for yeah. that. Because I've read that reconstituting the cheese beforehand beforehand doesn't, doesn't work. work. Yeah, very well. Okay, I haven't and so, I haven't researched. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole. Okay, yeah, that was like okay. So what I and I, when I did when I put my uh, lasagna together, I usually put sauce and then the noodles, the lasagna noodles, and then my beef sauce. And then I put cheese on top of it, but I switched it and put the cheese on top of the beef. the pasta oh, okay. on top of the lasagna noodles because I thought that way the beef would add moisture. add a little moisture, moisture to that was my thinking. Maybe it doesn't make any difference. I have no clue. But that's I just switched those two around thinking I could that see, I could see me adding a half a cup of water. And then, oh, it's Larani. Let's mm-hmm. cook it an extra 15 minutes. <laughs> it's like, that's how we fly at my house. I don't know. It's just trying to, you know, guesstimate. Yeah. You know? And then, of course, I throw it in the oven and I go down and milk the cow. So I have no idea what it's doing in the oven. Well, I'm, I'm not monitoring it, you yeah. know. So I'm like, I'd rather have it a little soupy than have it dried and burnt yeah. by the time yeah. I come back in the house. So I thought, well, I'll just it now do you mm. cover it with aluminum foil yes or? i did okay. yep yes i did and then on the very top i always put cheese on top and i did not use i used regular, regular cheese. cheese i just used fresh cheese and i did not try to put the freeze-dried stuff on top because yeah, i didn't know how that, that would work, work and i was like i'm not gonna push my luck so i'll just do it it'd this be almost way. interesting to take some and like put it in the microwave and microwave and see what it does yeah well, I've got two bags over there that we can use. <laughs> we can experiment well, with. Take a take a pinch. Maybe mm-hmm. put a pinch and then put like a teaspoon of water in it. Yeah, see what it does. So I thought, could you use it on pizza? Yeah. You know, Rich is like, well, maybe if you put it on pizza and you, you know, you did. Uh, normally, of course, I put my pizza, my my cheese is always on top when I make homemade yeah. pizza. But he said maybe you'd have to put it on top of the sauce and put your toppings on top of the cheese then. Yeah. You know, do it kind of like you see in the store or whatever. Yeah. You know, because they usually have your toppings on top I, and like, the cheese I on top. I always bottom. put pepperoni, the pepperoni on top. When mm-hmm. I make a pepperoni, I always okay. put that on top of the cheese. See, I put it under the cheese and over the cheese. <laughs> I oh, okay. put lots of pepperoni on the cheese, on the pizza. But there's a definitely learning curve there. But I was like, you know, I want to be using this stuff because I don't want to what? freeze dry 60 pounds of ground beef and then be like nobody will eat it yeah you know or whatever oh yeah you want to you want to you want to do it and then use it mm-hmm. you know the learn. that's in the process of the, the learning mm-hmm. um here's an idea maybe to try your cheese i don't know if you guys do it we call them microwave quesadillas where you take a tortilla shell mm-hmm. put cheese on it put pepperoni on it mm-hmm. microwave it for 30 seconds till it's bubbly and then you take it out and you roll it up Oh, okay. And so, uh-huh. and that's a snack uh-huh. at our house. Or, you know, it's like, I'm hungry, but I don't want to cook type thing. It's mm-hmm. like, here's oh, some see, cheese and so, pepperoni oh, and a okay. tortilla. So for us, we do this same concept, except I don't use a microwave. We just have tortilla pizzas. And oh. so I throw them in the oven. Oh, no. I, so, but like, yeah. You know, it's like, no, Bob, Bob is like. <laughs> but I could see where rolling it up would be really handy. Cause you just got to be, the, the pepperoni, if the pepperoni gets really hot, you, you got to watch the grease, oh, grease that yeah, drips, I, drips oh, out I of suppose. it. I suppose, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, oh, so that would idea. be to do that with the freeze-dried cheese and see, you know, try it. And mm-hmm. if it does anything, I guess I would probably put a pinch in the on a plate. Yeah, I my, think I would just, just to see how it yeah. reacts. Yeah. To see, you know, do 30 seconds and see mm-hmm. what it does. And if it doesn't do anything, put a drop of, put a teaspoon of water on it mm-hmm. and see if it. See what it does. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's like, see. Now if we were like <laughs> videoing it, we mm-hmm. could try that. Yeah, we could. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's something to think about. Yeah. Oh, no. Let's see. Did I do anything else? Yeah, what else did you do this week? Well, today, actually, Madison, our daughter, milked her goats for the last time on Friday. Yes. Um, so she had about three quarters of a gallon of goat milk. And I managed to sell a quart, a quart of that to someone today. So I had a half gallon left. And so I decided I would make goat cheese. And I have made goat cheese for, oh, a really long time. It was before we moved into our current house. 
So we moved into well, the current house in 2012. Oh, it's yeah. been a while since I've done goat cheese. And it's sitting up there on top of my refrigerator right now. And I can see it's already changing. And I started that just so, before you came over. So like maybe 6.30. So does this, did you heat it or you just... Uh, said- yep, I had to, it was chilled. The milk was already chilled. And so I had to bring it up to 86 degrees. And then I simply added my culture to make chev cheese. I put the lid on and put it up there on top of the refrigerator and it's supposed to culture for 12 hours. And then you take it out and you strain it through a nut bag or a, or cheesecloth cheese or whatever. And I, I can't remember how long it has to hang, you know, so it's a soft cheese, you know, oh, okay. Chef is a soft cheese. It's just similar. It's similar so to like the goat cream cheese. cheese. It's oh, yeah, okay. similar to goat to, yeah, you need like the goat cheese you buy in the store. Okay. Um, that type of things. This we'll sounds s- moist. Like, cause I was just like, I used goat cheese this week in a salad and it was kind of dry. It was pre crumbled and everything, okay. but so it was drier, okay. but this sounds... Yeah, this will be more like a like, like a cream, cream cheese. cheese. Yeah, okay. it'll be more... Because I won't strain it to make it super, super dry. But, you know, you can use goat milk to make cheddar cheese if you want to or whatever, you know. But this is this is your <laughs> your chev, you know, your true goat cheese. Um, and I know lots of people, you know, put blueberries in it or that type of thing and, and flavor this cheese. So you, Oh, now see, see, I would I would lean towards garlic and chives. Yep, yep, that's, that, that type of thing. That's that's the type of cheese this will be. What what I decide to do with it, I have no idea. But it's basic. To me, it's just like a cream cheese. Just, cheese and crackers. It, yep, it's just made with fondue? milk. Fondue? I don't know. Huh. You know, I'm not sure because I don't know if I've ever tried to melt, melt it. it. I don't know. It's been so long since I made cheese. And I don't remember exactly if we liked it because since I haven't made a whole lot of it, I don't know if well, we I liked the goat, goat cheese. Ha- goat cheese, goat milk, and jo- goat cheese has a, d- a definite unique taste mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. And I know in the past I have not liked it, but I've gotten where I enjoy it now. Okay. And I don't know if the fresh goat milk would be stronger than what you buy in the stores. Well, this is what people tell me who buy our milk, who buy our goat milk. They'll tell me that once you've tasted the stuff raw, you won't ever like the stuff in the store. The oh, wait, so you're going to wreck me for the stuff yeah, that I the, can get in the store? The stuff in the store, lots of people refer to it as um, it tastes like I've licked your barnyard, that type of thing. I don't know because I've never drank store-bought oh yeah you know goat milk i have had um store-bought goat cheese and i don't care for it okay you know that's um, the only goat cheese i've had i don't know but i know you know goat is just it's 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 a little different but then i people who drink our goat milk and our cow milk and drink both of them raw i'm told that if they didn't know better they wouldn't be able to distinguish our goat milk from our cow milk besides in flavor but the goat milk has a creamier texture to it, and that's probably oh, okay. because it's naturally homogenized. Oh, okay. That would be, that would be my guess as to why hmm. it tastes like that. Maybe but, I will have to try. I don't think I've ever tried your goat milk. Okay. Well, you're gonna have to wait till next, next season because <laughs> it's all being changed. It's all gone <laughs> what's, now. What's all? What's done is done, and it's made made into goat cheese, and so we'll probably have that on one of these. Other what? nights when you come over, because it'll be it should be when done we, when we have the gang together. Yes, yeah. yes, when we get together again. So, um, and we'll have to try it out and see how good it is or bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. And let's see what else. What else did we do? What else? Let's see. I said we did the tomatoes already, and I did that. And then I know later we're going to be talking about apples, but I did start a batch of apple cider vinegar homemade that that i have tried and we'll talk about that in a little bit we've been having you know we had the water issues with the well and now we have all the issues that come after the well is fixed because now we have a burst of lots of water pressure and it's i think it's throwing minerals and stuff through our lines and so we're having problems with our richie water the the main one that feeds the 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 dairy cows the one right by the barn yeah the one that's right by the barn that one's been um sticking open and leaking and so rich made a call this week to ruth with pico supply she's explained to rich how to temporarily fix it until we can get the parts and so hopefully we'll have the parts early next week to fix it but rich fixed it this morning and then it was stuck open again and so we had to fiddle around with it again then our hot water heater is having problems down in the barn you know our 
the big, huge water heater we have there. We had no hot water one morning, so he's been futzing with that. He's finally got it temporarily fixed, but we do need a new um, um, heating element uh, in there element. so to make sure it's working. But yeah, he had... Things were popping this morning, and and uh, sparks were flying, and I don't know what he was all doing. I was on the other side of the wall. I'm just like, you are you wanna, are you, you okay over there? May one may not want to know what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, I don't, you don't always want to know when somebody's messing with electricity exactly what they're doing. I don't know. So those are the things that we're kind of dealing with now, and that's kind of common when we replace the pump and we get all that pressure back. And oh, for instance, today I was filling the bathtub to give Chastity a bath. And I told Rich, make sure you remind me that the tub is running. Oh, it feels because it feels it's filling much faster now. And all of a sudden, I'm like, "Oh crap! Did, did you check the water level?" <laughs> well, it couldn't have been too bad. You oh, weren't excited no. when I got here. Well, yeah, well, that was this afternoon before milking, and I was like, so I, I'm running there, and I'm like, it's like. Two Ooh, inches from the top. Up. The drain thing was working. The overflow drain thing was working. Oh. It was keeping up. But <laughs> oh, those hard stopping yeah, moments. Yeah, I was going to say, and then Rich is like, so is it working? Is the drain working? Or is it just gushing over downstairs somewhere? And I'm like, well, I can't hear anything by this stairs. <laughs> <So> I just <laughs> assume it's working correctly. But yeah, so that was, a, you, you got to used to get used to the water pressure again in the house. <laughs> All over the farm, probably, too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I think the cows are definitely happier. You can tell they're not fighting so much to get to the water and stuff now because the water pressure is working and things are filling like they should be and that type of thing. Oh, yeah, we oh we had a we had a hose burst in the milk room. Yes. And the hoses that were leading to that. Yeah, one of those burst. So Madison come down to do her morning chores, and yeah. I was still in the house, and I get a text. It's like we get a flood. Um, she's like, uh, the hose burst. And I was like, oh, gosh, how much water? And she's like, I don't know. She says it's only in the dishwasher area. It didn't spray all oh, over the okay. entire room or whatever. But, yeah, there was a big bulge in the the, the in the in hose. And Rich figured it was because we probably ran hot water through that hose to run the dishwasher. And it really was not a hot water garden hose. It was just oh. a garden hose. And so oh. he says it was probably weak. And when the pressure came back on, it probably was too much because nobody shut the water off when the dishwasher <laughs> stopped working. Because, of course, don't think of that. Oh, no. <laughs> it wouldn't be me. <laughs> so those are the things that we've been dealing with kind of on the farm right now. Is farm with, life. Yeah, with, uh, with that type of thing. But um, I haven't had a whole lot of time in the kitchen to do a whole lot besides those just those few little thingies yeah. there. So... Oh, um, no, I guess I forgot. I, I made refrigerator pickles. Oh, that's right. In the middle of the night. In the middle in of the night. night. Yeah, yeah. You know, my yeah. husband came to bed late, you know, and we talked and that woke me up. And then it was like, oh, uh, and I, he goes to sleep and I'm laying there going, well, I might as well get up and do something. <laughs> and so I got up because I had this bowl of cucumbers that I picked when it was going to freeze. Mm -hmm. And I thought, so I made two <laughs> gallons of, you know, refrigerator pickles at, you know, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then went back to bed at four o'clock <coughs> for a couple of yep, hours yep, well, hey whatever at least yep. you got something done i right? got something if, done if you're awake you might as well do something constructive right yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah well whatever I in bed and maybe try to <laughs> the see me i'd be at 2 a.m i'm probably checking a cow <laughs> yeah you're checking a cow i have no cows to check <laughs> yes yeah. no pets um, in my house just you know things that are out trying to eat my garden eels yeah, <laughs> yeah little bunny whatever <laughs> So the topic of the evening is, is apples. apples. It's apple season. It is apple season in yeah. Minnesota. Yep. Yeah. And so we have a lot of apple orchards that are open right now. I None have, local, though, you found. No. You know, and I did check on, on the one we had talked about that was outside of Wilmer there. And it, I talked to um, the family that owns that. And they say it's no longer open to the public. The person who was tending it has passed away. Yeah. And the family has not replaced him. And so that's what she told me. I said, oh, that's really too bad because they had the best apple cider. Yeah. That was the best apple cider yep. I've ever had in we my life. We knew the family that owned it. My mm -hmm. husband's, Bob is friends with the son-in-law. Mm -hmm. And he would bring us a gallon every <gasps> fall. Oh, I know. We used to stop out there and buy it. And I was like, oh, that was the best. And still to this day, Madison will buy apple cider in store. She said, it's just not. It's no. just not. It's good. No. It's just not. Actually, Jackie, I, don't, I didn't tell you this. Is our daughter, Jackie. When she, she had just got her driver's license and she worked there. Oh, really? Picking apples one fall. 
Oh, wow. Because he would, we were homeschoolers and uh-huh. he would hire homeschoolers mm-hmm. because they could work mm-hmm. during the day, right. you know, in the afternoon uh-huh. before, you know, regular school kids could. And so she would drive her and the neighbor kids over because they homeschooled too. Mm-hmm. And they would drive over and they would pick apples. And she got to bring home apples. Oh, they had some really good apples there too. Oh, she I would bring Honeycrisp home. Oh, and that's when so Honeycrisp were new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're so good. And they were big. They were mm-hmm. they were bigger than softballs. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, so that was a thing. And mm-hmm. we would stop even you you know years after that. We we would stop and yep. talk to the yep. gentleman that yep. ran the. What's his name? His name was Bob. Bill. Bob. Bill. Bill. He's Bill. Yep. Bill. Bill. Apple yep. Bill. Apple yep. Bill. Bill. Yep. 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 And so, yeah, so we'd sit and talk to Bill and he was, he was fun we'd to buy talk apples to. and yep, cider. Yep. And yep, we did too. We we had, Rich had many conversations with yep, him. Because he would be at farmer's markets in Wilmer mm-hmm. too. Yep, so. yep. I've seen him, seen him there too. In the last two years, they, I haven't seen any apples from there. And no. I was like something, they must have decided not to. To well, I think that. Bill may have passed away. Yeah, I knew he passed away. And then the owner of the property passed away in the last year. Oh, okay. Okay. And so I don't know. I haven't asked. I guess I have not seen the son-in-law of the owner. He hasn't. I haven't ran into him out at our business and mm-hmm. stuff. And so I haven't asked him. You know, haven't mm-hmm. been able to ask him going, what did you, what happened? Where's the orchard? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, yeah. Was, uh, I like, had, do we have an in? Can we get some apples? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, that's why so I, had, I had asked my friend too. Cause he, and I was like, if I could get apples, she'd be able to get them for me. Cause she's really, she's in the family. In the family. Okay. Yep, she's in the family. And she's like, no, it's not open to the public. And I was like, oh, darn, darn it. Now I have to go somewhere else. So now we're like going, who's got yeah, apple trees? We're like who has apple trees in Madison's boyfriend's parents have yeah. Haroldson, which is a very common yes. apple here in Minnesota. That's very, it's a very old apple. Yep. Very, very old, but it's a really, it's a good apple. And if it's they, a, if they're having apples and a Haroldson, because the gal that I have gotten apples from in the past, Haroldson's is every other year mm-hmm. type tree. Mm-hmm. And then you need a good hard frost for them to taste good. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if the frost we had was enough. Yeah, yeah. Madison said that they had tasted the apples on that tree and they were starting to taste sweet, so they're not sure if they're quite ready yet. So I would say so, this freeze frost that's mm-hmm. coming now. Yep, they'll probably be now. ready after yeah. Wednesday so now or the, whenever that's supposed to happen. So this friend of mine, she has two trees. She has a Harrelson and then a golden. See? It's a yellow apple, so I don't know if it's a golden or what would be a gold. What would be a well, yellow. they have there's a there's a honey gold, but that's a fairly new one. No. And if she's got a if she's got a she's um, had this I mean Haroldson, she probably that other one is probably an older variety yeah, as well. Um, because we did it when my kids were still home. We're homeschooling. Because you can't go because we would rake her leaves in the fall and Okay, so but in Minnesota I don't think you can grow golden delicious. I don't think they're a cold hardy. Oh, okay. Um, but there are other varieties of yellow apples. Yeah. What does it say? She called them golden something. Could be golden I, yellow. Golden. See, I don't know my apples. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't know. I know the ones that I like. Yes. I know the ones that I like, but I don't know all this because there's a lot of varieties. I had ones called First Kiss, and that's I guess a fairly new one from the University of Minnesota, and it's a play off of the um, Honeycrisp. Oh, okay. And I found them at the farmer's market. And, oh, those were good apples. They were sweet and they were crisp, but they don't last very long. Okay. Um, They're not a a long storage apple. I don't think honey crisps are a long storage either. Yeah, I don't think so. Because they are a very sweet apple. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know, but, well, they're beautiful red and I was like, oh, I hadn't had that kind before. And they're, oh, try it, try it. They're a really great eating apple, you know, not so much for your no baking, baking or... and all that kind of stuff. But they made that. I think they would have made a really good applesauce. Oh yeah, yeah. You wouldn't you know, have because it was you, pretty sweet. You wouldn't have to add any extra sur- sugar yeah. or yeah. cinnamon. Well, yeah. you could always put cinnamon. Yeah, in. cinnamon. Yeah, but uh, you wouldn't have had to add sugar to that. I don't think. Or but very then I little. make. I I used to make apple butter. With the, these Harrelsons. Mm-hmm. But then I would add sugar. Yeah, you have to add a little sugar for that. Yeah, unless she had some of... Because her golden, her yellow apples, they're not always... They're, they She gets some every year, but some years are better than the others. Oh, okay. Hmm. So what do you know about apples, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Um, we had, when we lived in town, we had two apple trees. They were both Haroldsons. Okay. So I know a lot about Haroldson apples, and that's very true. We, not that we, I, our Haroldson trees never skipped a year entirely, but there was barely any apples on the tree. Yeah, there'd be you know, a few, yep, but not. Yep, and, not, and then the next year, they'd be just Weighing loaded. Weighing down. Yep, just loaded down. I don't know. I don't know tons about apples. I know what to do with apples. Yes. You know, I mean, I make a lot of applesauce. Yep, I've done in in the yep. past applesauce, apple butter. Yeah, uh, we don't we don't eat apple jelly, so no. that we don't do apple jelly. I've tried to make apple cider, unsuccessful. We've made hard cider. Oh. Rich has made hard cider. I don't even remember how he did it. I think we might still have some jars of it or bottles of it in our basement. To oh, be it's honest. really hard now. Yeah, I'm sure it's very very hard right now because he hasn't made any since we moved to the farm. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's pretty pretty hard. Um, let's see, what else have I done with apple pie filling? Yep, pie crisp. Filling. Yep, yeah. Then there's the just freezing them. Yep. You know, and saving them for whatever. You know, we apple cake, apple bread. App. I also use my apple sauce as a substitute for sure. oil oh. or butter in recipes. And it works really well. Like my, I make pumpkin bars. Mm-hmm. And instead of putting a cup of oil in there, I put a couple of applesauce in there. It is just so good. <laughs> I would think that would be so moist with the pumpkin yep, and everything. Yep, it's, it's really, it's, it, it changes it quite a bit. And so you'll see if you ever look in my recipe books, anything that's a, a bread is most like a quick bread is probably I've crossed off shortening or oil or whatever, and I use... X I, amount of... I use the exact... So... Uh, one for one. It's one, one for I one. I was going to say, what yep. are your substitutions? Yeah, okay. it's it's one for one, and I have the most moist whatever. I use it in my banana bread. I use it in lemon poppy seed, muffins bread, um, cranberry orange bread. Those are breads I make at Christmas time, and I use it in all of those. I don't... I don't have a whole lot of vegetable oil, and I don't have any shortening in my house. No, I don't either. I, don't, I either I use have butter or butter, lard. Lard, or I have olive oil or avocado yep, oil. Yep, I've got, I, I don't have avocado oil, but I do have olive oil. I don't. You can't use olive oil in a bread recipe? I would think, you I, would, I would think it would get weird. It would get a taste. Mm-hmm. You would have that taste. Mm-hmm. And I have tried doing... Um, making brownies and substituting the oil because if you do a brownie mix you know from the store oh, yeah then they always say you put oil in there and applesauce for some reason doesn't work for, for that. me in that it just i don't know it doesn't work so i just change it to butter see and i yeah. my husband isn't a big brownie guy mm-hmm. and so i don't hardly ever make brownies and neither is my husband he doesn't like brownies but i just what eat the whole pan them, myself the i just make a small pan and eat it myself there we go <laughs> We can share. <laughs> well, maybe we can like, freeze dry it. No, maybe not. It's, it's it's chocolate. I'm not sure how that would. Oh. Although it's a, it's more like a bar, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's like a. It would be like a bread, though. Yeah, I don't know if it would taste very good reconstituted. No. <laughs> um, I might just not mess with the brownie because yeah, you don't want to yeah, wreck it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you don't want to wreck the brownie. <laughs> oh. It's all holy and yeah, yeah. Sacred. Okay. <laughs> sacred. <laughs> Well, anyways, I'm hoping to get my hands on some apples, and I know yes, you are too. Yep. And hopefully, we can share between the two of us and yep. uh, get some things made. I want to freeze and, dry them. Yes, definitely. Because um, the pears that we fe- freeze dried, they are they have gone into a jar, and it is a snack I heard at our it, house. Yep, I was gonna say I heard it was a hot hot snack over yeah, there at yep, your place. Even the granddaughter, like, I'm thinking I could see taking these in the car and not making horrendous mess with them. Mm-hmm. Because oh, like, yeah. Because, you know, like if you do Cheerios or something like that mm-hmm. or cold cereal crackers, mm-hmm. oh, they're a horrendous mess mm-hmm. in a car seat. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's a really good, yeah, cause that's a nice finger food and it's yeah. not messy and healthy. Yeah. Uh, that's always a win-win yeah. there. So, I mean, I try oh. not to do any of the, you know, food color snacky mm-hmm. type, you know, like mm-hmm. I don't do like gummy bears or... Mm-hmm fruit snacks mm-hmm. because it's artificial colors in there and i've been reading about how that can affect behaviors of children mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. she's two almost three in a month and she can be active all by herself yeah she doesn't need any help <laughs> no she doesn't need anything to wind her up you yeah, know it's like yeah. i try to i limit the amount of sugar that i give my grandkids unless unless it's their birthday yeah. well that's okay 
Another thing we can make with apples, which we did not touch yet, oh. and we did, we did mention it earlier that I've got apple cider vinegar oh, yes. brewing in yes. my Yes, I, I, I want to try to do this. I yes. watched a YouTube video on okay. it. Okay, so how did they do it on they, your video? They were fermenting it. Is that, what, is that what you're doing? Yep, I'm fermenting it. So she took, they took apples, They what they call the not pretty apples that mm-hmm. that have scars that you wouldn't be able to sell or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They were taking those, cutting them up in chunks, and then putting them in a gallon jar and stomping them like you would for sauerkraut. Okay. And then I don't remember the details of her timing. I don't remember if she, because she was doing a lot of the, this gal I was watching, she was doing a year. She was something she was, I think she was maybe letting them ferment for six months, and then she strained them, and then she let them go another six months. Oh, okay. So, because she was doing so, oh, what else? I watched another one of their videos, and that's what they had done. Maybe it was fermented garlic. Mm. Oh, uh, yes, honey garlic. She was making honey garlic and honey, mixing them up, mm-hmm. and she was draining this last year's, and she was making next year's. Oh. So she leaves them sitting ferment. Wow. And they were dark. I mean, the the year old honey garlic was a dark. So did she consume the garlic, or did she just? consume the liquid honey part i think she was just doing the honey and she she okay. took it the, and that was more like a, a cold remedy yeah because garlic so, and honey together are awesome okay. cold remedies and okay. stuff and so yep. so that's okay consume a, some of it when she was sick okay the reason i ask is because on the small sustainable farm homestead. sustainable and homestead living group there's a guy on there named aaron and he had done a whole post on there about doing this honey garlic thing. And he just put garlic in the jar and then f- covered it up with honey. And then I think he left it sit for a minimum of two weeks. And then he ate the garlic cloves out of there. Oh, I could like see Like two that. or three of them as as he went. And I don't remember so if he, he refurnished the jar or... With more garlic? Yeah, with more garlic, or if he just started more jars. I can't. It's been a while since yeah. I saw these posts from him. And then, yeah, and he he took he took that as a a or precaution. Protection. Okay, and he lives in Alaska. Healthcare he, is not readily available, yeah, probably. Yeah. And, and I mean, he lives totally off grid. Yep. Okay. And um, so he doesn't even have running water in his in his home, if I remember correctly. And so he uses, you know, he buries food in cellars and he does a lot of it. He's a very interesting person to watch his posts. But I know he, he took, he was, I, he was saying like he eats two or cloves a day or something over the see, winter. I could or see, something yeah, like that. I, preventative. And then when mm-hmm. you're sick, mm-hmm. if you feel a cold coming mm-hmm. on. Uh, to, you know, you could use the honey to put into tea, tea. or hot, even just hot water yeah and put just it in drink, hot water yeah, yeah. And just drink it that way or whatever i do actually have a jar of it in my cupboard now that i think of it i had done it oh yours is aged too then yeah i bet it has aged because i don't think i've looked at it probably for six months I, well i know i haven't looked at it all summer and i know i started sometime in the winter and, and, and actually that's something that i want to do i have garlic that i grew mm-hmm. and, and mine was store-bought but yeah and so i want to but then i don't want to i need to grow more garlic i think because so have you planted garlic then? No, I was okay. kind of, kind of wait. I, October is usually my rule of thumb. Okay. And so I will, I think, right. Well, yeah, the one that had um, my peppers were in it, I will probably plant them in there. Mm. I, I have some of your compost. Mm-hmm. And so I will throw some more compost because garlic is a heavy feeder. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. And I've never so, grown garlic, so. Yeah. Um, and they like what. <laughs> consistent water okay which i'm trying to work on and because i've raised beds and so you have to water them more often because they drain quicker and i think the size of my bulbs is a result of inconsistent watering oh and i learned last year that you you know compost compost in when you plant them and then when it's in may when it starts warming up and stuff you need to refeed them to put more compost in and then like mid-june or so to do one more compost application or store-bought yep. fertilizer, mm-hmm. I would recommend a you know a good um, organic one. Because mm-hmm. I had, before I started using your compost, I was using a chicken manure, organic chicken manure mm-hmm. one. Then I would get, you know, then you would probably get better. And with consistent water, you would get a better bulb. Okay. So I'm planning to keep my two biggest bulbs and break them up and then... Hopefully, I can plant maybe 30-some bulbs. Okay. 
You for... think that would give you a nice, nice crop? Can I ask? Now you're talking about, um, you know, in May you're gonna do the compost and stuff. Now is that truly a, like a Minnesota or a northern part of the United States? Is that something that? I mean, somebody in California probably isn't going to grow their garlic. No, that they would same, have to figure yeah, some, have to, somebody that's, so you know, we're, we're, we're zone more, four. Okay. All right. There, zone, there's what you know, was looking for. Yeah. We're a zone four. We're so zone would, four. I would imagine California's growing would, yeah, season probably would be different. Totally yeah, different. Totally what? different. Because, we wouldn't even know. Because they're do. planting spinach and, <laughs> and kale mm -hmm. and everything, you know, mm -hmm. still now. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's like, I'm like going, oh, I think it may be too late yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the weather, once October gets here, it's just kind of flippy floppy. You yeah, just the days never aren't know. warm enough and they're yeah. not long enough yep. to grow. Yeah, and even if it is warm enough, it's not long, long enough. It's not it, long yeah, enough. Even with, the, enough you know, sunlight. I had plans, you know, I always have grand plans of, you know, like I bought a little greenhouse cover for my garden and I had plans, but it didn't execute it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have salad and stuff going for now. Yeah. It is what it is. It is. It is yeah. yeah. Speaking about garlic. Have you ever been to the garlic festival? No. Have you? I've I've gone once. No, I, I did garlic not. Garlic ice cream. <laughs> that just sounds wrong to me. It's actually really quite good. Is it really? <laughs> yes, and I'm not really a huge fan of garlic. And I mean, I kid you not, it is a fairgrounds full of everything garlic you could imagine. Well, at least everybody would have the same breath. <laughs> <laughs> that was several years ago, and oh, so I shouldn't have. You know, the, I I watched. Um, Looking for bread recipes, I was looking at TikTok because I had saved some recipes. <laughs> Don't we love TikTok? But there was one where they had roasted garlic, and then they had, is it called fagachi or something like that? A bread. It's a kind of a flatter bread. It's oh, yep. I know what you're talking about. I don't know how to pronounce it either. And you poke fingers with mm -hmm. your holes and you mm -hmm. put a lot of olive oil or mm -hmm. butter on top mm -hmm. of it. And then they had roasted this garlic. Like, we're talking a dish of it. And then um, they put the garlic on top of this bread, and then they baked it. And I thought... Oh, that would be good with soup. Yeah, I bet it would be. But very like, good. oh, if you're not a big garlic person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I like I like garlic in stuff, but I don't like an overpowering garlic thing. You know, like those honey cloves, garlic cloves I have sitting up there. I'm not sure I could eat one. Oh I'm yeah, not sure. Even though I, you know, I have a, I have a sweet tooth. I've told you that many times. Yeah. My yeah, I don't my know. My Scandinavian that... side comes out, and I love I love sweet things. I don't know and... if I could see, uh, you know, because. One of my cold remedies when I feel a cold or if, when I have a cold coming on is what I will do. First time I did this about died is somebody said, take a clove of garlic and eat it raw. Ooh. Yeah. And so my husband and I, it was a bad cold. We were desperate. <laughs> and so we did. And they said, chew it. Make sure it burns. It was, it oh, was, really? it was not the same heat as a jalapeno. But it was hot on your tongue like a hollow, you know, it was hot and spicy. Okay. And it was like, so I don't know if it was a fresh <laughs> clove or what, if it would, had just been. But did it cure you? Actually, it did. So now, <laughs> now the way I do it now is I will make a piece of toast, butter it, press, you know, push the clove of garlic through a garlic press. Uh-huh. And then put it on the bread and smear it around and then close it up so that my tongue doesn't touch. Oh, the, okay. Yep. Yep. But. but my husband says I can't do it more than two days because I it starts coming out my pores. That's very true because when I do that with Chastity to give her her immune system a boost, and for those of you who don't know, I have a I have a disabled adult daughter that lives with us, and she's tube fed, and so I've complete control over her diet. And if she's getting sick, I tend to feed her raw garlic, and I can only feed her like two days like you said because she starts to smell like a garlic clove yeah it just comes out of everywhere i swear on her yep. and it's like i can't stand it but i mean it, it does it help does. her it helps it yeah. helps with the cold yeah but it's and like stuff. <laughs> and then oregano and if you know oregano oil too okay i had read somewhere it's like i heard um a youtube doctor mm -hmm. you know he was a chiropractor and stuff and he had said Put two drops of oregano oil in a glass of water and drink it. Um, <laughs> that is very hard. I was going to gonna do. say that sounds That's hard. That's really hard because yeah. oregano oil is hot. Okay. It's hot, hot, hot. I'm like. Really? Yeah. I mean, like burn your mouth hot. Wow. But it kicked the cold. <laughs> so between the you, garlic and the. You can get it in your yeah, system. Between the garlic and the oregano oil. I mm -hmm. mean, three days I felt fine. 
Wow. Or no, it was, I was coming down with it. And it's like, I can't, I have this event I have to go to. Mm-hmm. I cannot get too sick to go to that. Mm-hmm. And it was, I mean, I was down to just a sniffle in three days. Wow. That's incredible. And so if I didn't get the raging, you know, stuffy, yep. no sore yep. throat. Yep. If you can down it, I suppose. Yeah, if you, you can know, get it down. If you can get it down. Okay, so what were we talking about? Where did we start? Because we garlic. got off on garlic. But no, I was Apples. talking about apple cider vinegar. Oh, yes. That's what we were talking about. We probably should go get back. back to that. The reason I thought maybe we should touch on apple cider vinegar is uh, my friend, um, she's, she goes by the, the prairie chick on, on uh, you, Facebook. Facebook. On Facebook. She has a little company. She makes soaps and mm. she uses our goat milk and our cow milk to make soap. She also does lotions and salves and drawing salves and oh, that okay. type of thing. She's that, she's what a crunchy mom, would you call her? Whatever. I don't know, but she makes a lot of her own stuff, own suntan lotion, all this stuff. And then she sells oh, it through her business. In- sounds very interesting. Something yes. I'm like, Oh yeah. yeah. I have so, not met this person. <laughs> no, you have not met Heather. So Anyway, she also runs a group on Facebook called um, Frugal Frugal Cooking and Homesteading Skills. And she had posted, here's my, here's my apple, apple cider, cider vinegar, vinegar. Um, recipe. And I thought, oh, hey, we it's, can run over We can run over to the other farm that has apple trees. We have apple trees here, but ours didn't produce this year. Um, and so we run over to the other farm and I said, we'll just pick up the like you were saying, the ugly yeah, apples. The so ugly we just apples. pick up the ground apples, the stuff yep. that has fallen off the tree or whatever, the bugs have gotten to, whatever, and just salvage whatever we can. Yeah, yeah you can cut out the bad yep, parts. And- yep, and so that's what I did. I We picked up everything on the ground that was laying on the ground or whatever because the apples over there aren't ripe yet. They're uh, apple that has the frost has to hit a couple times before yep. they before they ripen. And I don't even know what kind they are. I just know that that has to happen because just the history of picking the apples over there. And so we picked those and Rich picked actually picked some of the green apples too. I printed off her recipe okay. that she had put up there. And this one said that you could use whole apples and just chop up the core and whatever and throw it in, or you can use peels and cores and whatever. It didn't really make any difference. And I just used whole apples because that's what I had. Yeah. Um, and I just I just chopped them up and it I used a gallon jar. The recipe called for um, a cup of sugar for a gallon jar, and you fill the jar half full of apples, chopped apples. Throw your sugar in, fill the rest of the jar up with water till it's to the top, and then you cover it with cheesecloth. And you okay. leave it sit for at least two weeks in a warm spot, stirring it at least twice a day to make sure that sugar Dissolves. is dissolving and not all sitting at the bottom. But it didn't talk anything about mashing them. Or anything yeah. like you were talking yeah, about this mashing master. them, and she, it and they said it it would be ready in a month, if I remember right. I think it was a month. Let me look at my recipe here. Yeah, after a month, sample it and see if it's good enough. It might take up to three months, and once it's your desired flavor, then put it in bottles, store at room temperature in the refrigerator, and enjoy. Um, and so, so this it, is apple cider vinegar. Yeah, okay. Yep, that's what it said right at the top there. So I suppose because you know um, I make kombucha, and if mm-hmm. you let it go more than twenty one days, you have vinegar. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's warm out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So it's sitting up there, and it was foaming this morning. I started it yesterday. Um, and so it was already it had the little, you know, bubbles on the yeah. top or whatever when I stirred it and everything. It still smells like apples to me. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of apple cider vinegar, so this is. I well, it's supposed to be, I mean, pr- another preventative health thing. Yes, it's supposed to be really good. So, yeah, Rich was asking me, so what do you, what do you use it for? Well, of course, he's used it in his kabucha when he, yep. when he's made it. But um, I, the only other thing I really use it in is when I make bone broth. Oh, okay. When I roast my bones, I add apple cider vinegar to my bones. Yep, to soften to, them. To get all soften the them out. and get, get the marrow out and all that stuff. Um, but I never add any more, you know, I put mine into a slow cooker and leave them. We just graze off of the slow cooker for a week and then I my bones are starting to fall apart so then I toss them and I start over again um, but I never add any more apple cider vinegar to it okay um but don't they use apple cider vinegar in uh, fire cider yes they do yes I yes say, that's on I know my it's list a, I know that's it's on my one. list it's on yep. my list of things to make yep hopefully this week because it needs to sit yep yep it's all that six stuff weeks. that ferments and stuff and we're coming into cold season yep of course and that's where I you want to use found, that I even you know, in the past, I've used powdered turmeric because I couldn't find 
turmeric root Mm -hmm. in Wilmer. Mm -hmm. But I found some. Cashwise is carrying it over in the organic section. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, that's interesting because I know my friend Heather has had to go either to Whole Foods or order it from Azure um, to get turmeric. And she actually grows it. Okay. See, I wondered about if I could grow this next summer. She grows it. But yeah, so I don't remember what I paid for it, but... For, you know, it was probably three, four inches long. Mm-hmm. That's what I needed for my recipe. And so I have it in the refrigerator. And so I'm like going, okay, got to put that on. You know, if the garden's gone, once the garden's done outside, the canning process is done, then I have more time for things like that. Mm-hmm. Then I'll get back to making my bread. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's just that did, bread doesn't happen. Bread, the baking doesn't happen in my house because there's no, it's, it'll make the house hotter. <laughs> you want it warm in the winter time. So yeah. So it helps a lot, doesn't it? It's like a supplement heat in my house. Yeah. Yeah. When you have a hundred year old house that you're living in and <laughs> there's still a drafts. Little, little need, needs a little help. And what else? I mean, people use it in pickling. Yep. You know. And there's, you know, and they they talk about if you're one of those people that take it daily that you, you know, you dilute it with water because you want to, um, that's one thing I do know is you want to be cautious because the vinegar, you do not want it on your teeth. It's hard on your teeth enamel. So you okay. either, if you're going to drink it, if you're going to make like a drink where I've seen it where you take apple cider vinegar, water, cinnamon, ginger, powdered ginger. I don't, I don't have my recipe in front of me. So, mm-hmm. and it's kind of in it and they to, to drink it like a half hour before you start eating for the day, either if you do it right in the morning or if you're an event and faster and then you, you know, half hour before you are going to break your fast to do that. It mm-hmm. helps with your digestive system. Oh, okay. but help. I've, I've seen it recommended and I've done it for a while. I just gotten lazy and don't, I don't always do it. Okay. But then, you know, um, if you're going to, if you're a salad dressing maker too, is I will use that instead of white vinegar in my salad dressing. Okay. Okay. It adds a different flavor. Oh. So if you're a vinegar and oil type salad dressing person. Yeah. And I suppose you get all that immune boosters yeah. and all that stuff. You, know, you, you shake just, it up yep. and you get the mother. Yeah. Because you always want the mother in yeah, there. Yeah. You want the mother in there. And that, I'm told that a mother will develop in this. Yeah. In so I had. This so. gal said she'd, um, the gal that I'd watched, she said when she strained it at six months and then she was going to let it go for it, she goes, you will develop a, a SCOBY on top mm-hmm. of it, mm-hmm. you know, and the SCOBY, what does SCOBY stand for? Symbiotic. Okay. Uh, yeast I colony, can't something I can't remember. Yeah. I, I, that I have no clue on. Cause um, it's the same thing in kombucha. Okay. You, you get the, the SCOBY on top and it's the bacteria and everything and the yeast Living together on top of it hmm. and forming. Mm-hmm. And that actually what forms the seal on top of your kombucha. Yep. Yep. I've seen the mothers. Well, I've, I've seen the mothers in the natural stuff in the um, the apple cider vinegar you buy in the store. Oh, yeah. If you get the right stuff, yeah. you'll see there's a mother in there. Let's see. Um, what else? Um, uh, Carolyn and Josh over at um, oh. um, Homesteading Family, they make a thing called Switchel. I think oh. that's how you say it. And it's it's kind of like a natural energy drink or whatever. Oh, and, okay. I mean, it's got apple cider vinegar and oh, what else did it say in there? Um, they put ginger in there. I think there's some kind of sweetener in there or whatever. But they use it kind of almost like a, almost like a Gatorade. Oh, you know, okay. I could a, see that. A natural because it replenishing would, fluids yeah, type minerals thing. Minerals and you know. electrolytes Yeah, and stuff? some people call it... Um, haymakers juice or something like that because you know when you're when you're Sweat. doing hay or you're doing or straw hard. you know in the middle of summer it's always the hottest day when you have to throw bales or yep. be out, you know and that type of thing i suppose that's where that name come from i i don't know but um they have a recipe that uses apple cider vinegar in the their uh um on their website but out here on the farm we use apple cider vinegar differently in our cattle okay you know, it does have immunity boosting type qualities and and so we use it um i almost any tincture i give my cows probably has apple cider vinegar as a base oh, um, okay. just because it helps with um calf scours you can oh. add it to their bottles if you want to it's in i have this stuff called ceg and we give it to um, cattle that are maybe having problems with pneumonia stuff like that those kind of bacterial viral type things and it just helps give a boost to it but the, it's a base and a lot of organic treatments that you use with your cows 
I was supposed for goats too. Yeah. We don't we don't do goats organically, but with my cows, I noticed that that's a lot of things. And if you look, a lot of people use it for um, scouring with the calves. Now, I don't use straight apple cider vinegar for scouring if I am experiencing that with my calves. My apple cider vinegar is in a tincture that I actually give them, or uh, you know, feed something. To them yeah, something that I something I add their... to their bot their bottles or to their. If I'm feeding electrolytes, lots of times I add that to them just to give them an extra boost. That's where I would probably use most of my apple cider vinegar if I have it on hand. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, my mom never had the stuff in the house. No, you know, we always had just the white. Just white, plain white vinegar. vinegar. Yep. yep. My, so that was learning that's, about, that's I learned about pickles. it as an adult. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. now that I think, my, the refrigerator pickles mm -hmm. that I made the other day used at it. 2 o'clock in the morning, I used apple cider okay. vinegar. Yeah. Okay. I've used a whole gallon this year. Okay. In canning season and mm -hmm. stuff. I'm like, well, you got to make your own then. Yeah. I'm like going, cause I'm down to like a half a gallon. I'm uh -huh. like, yeah. And so, and I did save the, cause you had asked me, I said I was going to make an apple crisp for tonight and you said, save your pills. And I did. Mm -hmm. And of course I left them in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. You you know how to do it here. I can send you home. Yeah, send recipe. me the recipe home. <laughs> oh, actually, um, Christmas ornaments. Have you ever? Did your kids ever make applesauce, cinnamon ornaments in school? <laughs> um, uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, um, when our kids were, you know, so this is many years ago because my kids are in their late twenties and mm -hmm. early thirties. In Head Start, they did. You take you take applesauce. And then you add enough cinnamon until you get a dough. Oh. And then you can flatten it out and cut it out. They'd cut out oh, at the cookie dough cutter or cookie uh -huh. cutter, poke a hole in it so they could put a ribbon in it. I bet it smells really good, too. Oh, yeah. I, th yeah, I may even actually still have them in there. Because I had, I was one of those parents that bought an ornament for their kids every year. Mm -hmm. And I still have those boxes. I sent them off with my daughter <laughs> and my son. Uh-huh. And the other two are like, now, nah, mom, you can just keep them. <laughs> like, okay. Then are they, are they sealed at all or anything? Or no, they just you, well, you, uh, you baked them. Oh, I think okay. if I remember right, you baked them. And so they, they're okay. like a dough. Okay. I mean, they're like yep. a play dough that you bake mm -hmm. okay. and they harden. Okay. So kind of almost I, like a plaster. Huh, I'm sure. No. I'm sure you no. could Google again and yeah. get a recipe. Apple, and... apple sauce, Christmas ornaments, probably. Yeah, probably. Oh, I know. Um, Rich talked about um, they used to make uh, where you take and you like make a face in the apple, and then you let the apple dry, and then it gets all weird. Oh, apple people or Near something. Some, yeah, apple heads. Oh, or whatever, yeah. Or whatever they were. I I never did anything like that, but he talked about shrunken shrunken heads. Shrunken heads. Shrunken heads. Oh, yes, that's what he used to do. Shrunken heads. That's that what sounds like. Yes. Them. <laughs> Uh, but I think I remember those. Was okay. that an 80s thing? <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never, I mean, I think I've probably seen them, but I never, we never did that. Yeah. You know, or whatever. But no, I, remember, I never done it, but yeah. I think I've seen them. Yeah, I think I, Richard had talked about it at one time doing it or whatever, but. Like, I would think after a while they'd start to mold. Well, I don't know. They probably just simply dry out. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if they put them in the oven to. You know, help I think them they dry get mushy out. if you put them in the oven. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea how they did it, but I know he talked about it. That that was you take the ugly apples and make them uglier or whatever. So <laughs> I don't know, but but let's see. Gosh, we covered we covered a few extra well, yeah. things here. We talked about garlic and not only apples. Mm -hmm. So are you going to put in now? Speaking, but going back to garlic, are you um, going to try putting any garlic in the harvest tray? I would like to. I don't know if I have enough. Okay. I don't know if I'd have, well, I'd probably only have enough for like a half quart, probably a quart of a tray. How, you know, so I don't have enough for a whole tray. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably, I only probably did 30 bulbs and I used quite a bit of it in my canning. Mm -hmm. So in my salsas and uh, spaghetti sauce and stuff, mm -hmm. I used a lot of my own garlic. Yep. And so it's like, mm, and then if I'm going to take two or three bulbs and you say plant it. Yeah. Yeah. And about, so yeah. I'm not going to have a whole lot left because then, but then if I dry it, then because I do struggle with it, um, keeping it until next spring, oh, Okay, I will end up having to, you know, probably March or so I'll have to end up, it may be mushy, you know, okay. just like potatoes and onions, uh -huh. their storage life. Yep. You know, they, you know, towards the spring, they're starting to get mm -hmm. soft and want to grow. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, yeah. 
So maybe, maybe I will. We'll have to Wait time to it pre- though, so I put it with something. Well, we can. We, you know, I did just a small, a very small amount, just to see how it turned oh, out. Oh, okay. And I have done. I sliced it. Oh, okay. Um, and then um, I did it at the same time as I did onions. Did your whole house smell? No, it did not. In because I have read stories about it smelling at the house. No, but you know, I was reading on. One of the freeze dry groups, I can't remember because I, I belong to several yeah. of them. They were talking about, they took and they, somebody had done like a half a tray. They had roasted whole garlic and then they had raw chopped garlic and raw sliced garlic and whole cloves and all this kind of stuff. And then they took several different types of breads and put them over the top of that, uh, over all their garlic and then... After they freeze dried it, then they take those pieces of bread off there and they cut them up and make them into croutons. Oh, and they pick up that garlic flavor. That or 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 uh, stuffing. Yeah, somebody else said yeah she had used hers. She was going to use hers for Thanksgiving to make stuffing out of. And I thought, how genius is that? Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of smart people oh, in those groups. Yeah. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of brilliant ideas mm-hmm. I've been reading. But I was like, you know, and then they say that also helps with the smell or whatever. But that one guy, he was using like five grain bread, something or another, and he had white bread and. He had some fancy breads on there, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, the trays aren't real big on the medium size, which is what we have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I did the bread run, I just did three slices on I each see. one, but you probably could get six if you really crammed them in there, but I didn't think it was necessary when we did the yeah, initial just, bread run. We are just trying to get the stink out of the yeah, machine. Yeah, the, you know. the new factory yeah, cell. Yeah, so, but I thought, well, that's a pretty smart way to do I should have done that with with when I did the onions and the yeah. garlic, you know, I could have easily put bread on top of there. Because that's when, you know, I'm hoping to get to the farmer's markets are going to start shutting mm-hmm. down pretty soon mm-hmm. and to be able to go and maybe grab some onions, mm-hmm. you know, a bag of onions, because I know there's one vendor that sells um, sweet onions, mm-hmm. but sweet onions don't last. They very, don't keep. Yep. They don't keep up here in Minnesota. Yep. yep. And so to be able to buy, because she'll sell them in like 20 pound bags. Ooh, nice. But to be able to freeze dry most of those. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I froze. I, I did. Those were sweet onions that oh, I so did. Oh, so maybe that's why the smell. Yep. Whereas the onions that I grew, mm. they were very powerful. strong. <laughs> and I'm like, going, oh, that was. So did you grow white or yellow? Uh, yellow. Yellow. And okay. purple. A red. And, okay, and red. Red. Now, I have noticed I grabbed a uh, purple the other day. They're not a long story. No, they're not. I grabbed two, and they were soft already. So mm-hmm. it's like, going to mm-hmm. have to do something with them. Yeah. So I may have to freeze dry them. We'll have to time this. Well, you know, well, you can always I'll do chop that. them up and put them in the freezer. Yeah. You know, I've done that with a few things already where, you know, like yep. our ground beef, uh, the freezer wasn't ready yet for the ground beef. And so I had went ahead and cooked it up, and it crumbled really nice for me, and I just threw it in the um, in a Ziploc bag in the freezer, yep. and it just poured right out for me. It 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 freeze dried beautiful, or it, it freezed in the freezer really yep. really nice. And then I just throw it I threw it into the Ziploc bag after I had basically flash freezed it. Yeah, you know, and it worked out beautifully that way. So I would think that if you did the same thing with onions, even if you didn't have a a freeze dry tray to put it on if you just put yeah. it on a cookie sheet. Because actually, you know, I did, I, that's another thing I forgot. I, I maybe need to make a list of what I'm doing in the kitchen every day. Yeah. <laughs> because um, it's hard to remember. I had banana peppers that I picked the other day. Uh huh. Just a couple of green peppers. My green peppers got hit by some bug. Oh. So when you cut them open, they're like, ew, ew, in the middle. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. But lots of banana. I had lots of banana peppers. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> I was and in so, your garden. <laughs> and so I sliced all those in rings mm-hmm. and threw it froze them and threw them in a uh, Ziploc bag thinking uh-huh. at some point we'll just throw, we're going to clean out my freezer <laughs> yep, <laughs> with yep, the freeze dryer yep. and I froze them. And so I finished slicing them and then I, I put them in um, like a Tupperware flat rectangle so that they'd freeze flat and then okay. I'd pop them apart and then I'm going to throw them in that Ziploc bag. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll do the peppers and onions on it in a and, load. Yeah. Should be able to. I think I have enough to, I probably could. And yep. maybe throw some little garlic in there. Okay, we got next week's trays already planned out. Because <laughs> I can't, re- I can't remember how long it took for the onions and garlic. I don't think you did. They were very long. I don't think it was very long. But I just think that putting that bread on there is genius. Yeah. Yeah. We have to do that. Yeah. I mean, even with your peppers. Yeah. You know, you could probably put it on top of the peppers. Not that I've ever put peppers in stuffing or anything, but. Yeah, I know, but you could croutons. Yeah. I mean, if you. I, I've awesome. never made homemade croutons, no, to be I honest. Either. I've never done that, but on the topic of the, the harvest rate. And um, so I have 
to people who um, buy milk from me, buy raw, yep. raw customers cow milk. of yep, yours. customers of mine. And they've had their freeze dryers longer. Anita owns a large. Ooh. And um, Jane has a medium. They are always updated. They come almost every week. They're here. If not every week, it's every week and a half. And they, every time it's, oh, I can't believe how beautifully your milk freeze dries. Yes, that is this. one thing I want to try. Yep, they tell me and they do, I don't even remember if they skim it. I don't think they do. Um, okay. I know, I know that um, Jane makes butter with the cream off the milk she buys. So maybe she does use skim milk, but she has some medical issues. So she has to eat all her food fresh. She can't handle anything that been cooked is, it, it can be cooked but it has to be fresh she has a problem with some histamines i don't quite oh, okay i don't quite understand the whole thing i've never researched like it over tomatoes. but she's Tomato? she has to eat all her meat has to be fresh so like um to buy um beef from us our beef has to hang for 14 days in order to let it tenderize and so that you have decent steaks and stuff she couldn't eat it because oh. there's histi- there's a, a chemical reaction that happens and it makes her sick oh and so she eats whatever her husband hunts now. Oh. And I mean, <laughs> she, 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 she says, I eat squirrel, I eat rabbit, I eat lots of venison. And I really, really would love to have some pork or some beef because I'm getting tired of eating squirrel, duck, and yeah. you know, those, those yeah, yeah, she's, she, everything has pictures. So she can't buy meat at the store. Because no. she doesn't know the history of it, yeah. so it all has to be fresh. And so that's why she got a freeze dryer, is because she's able to preserve her food sooner so she doesn't have to constantly have fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and fresh meat in her house. She can put some of it away. And she does a lot of things, retreat-type things, where she's gone for many days, and she says, I'm very hungry. When um, she gets back. I'm very hungry during the, the whole retreat because... I can't eat the food that's there. Yeah. So this freeze dryer has been like a lifesaver for her. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. And so she was, she was just telling me, you know, some of the stuff that she, that she does and share her big thing is to use our, um, our raw milk and freeze dry it. And then she puts it in granola and oh. then she just adds some water to it. And she has like an instant breakfast. Oh, yeah. You like know, your own instant oatmeal. Yeah, like an oatmeal type thing or whatever. And she says, I don't even have to have hot water. I can eat it cold. It's, it's, then it's just like cereal, you know, yeah. or whatever or whatever. And, um, so then she, 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 um, freeze dries a lot of meals. So when mm-hmm. she makes a meal, she makes extra so that she can freeze, freeze dry, dry it so that she can take it with her when she goes to meetings or whatever because once again she can't eat what eat most what, yeah she can't what, eat she what can't most eat people. what's catered usually yep 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 she can't do that and so she has all this freeze dried food and then she was telling me she went through and all of her canned goods so anything she's canned herself okay home canned or canned from the store cuz i actually asked her i was like so when you say canned food, you know, what do you mean? She says, oh, yeah, I, we went through and we had these big totes full of canned goods from the store, you know, canned beans, canned that type of thing. Okay. And she says, and they freeze dried all of that. And she, I forget how much space she freed up. She freed up. And then she's been doing extras and putting it into um, glass jars. And she's going to give away freeze dried fruit for Christmas to all her family and all this time and stuff. So her freeze dryer must be running 24 yeah. seven all the time because she's always got a whole list of food that she's telling me that she's doing when she comes. Anita just, she just freeze dries because she can, she doesn't have those dietary restrictions yeah. like Jane does. They are both all just, oh, you're, 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 you know, your, your milk just freezes so beautifully and everything. And it's so versatile and it makes my life so much easier. And, you know, I just, I just amazed. And then they're, they're they, they come out of, out of um, my um, milk room. And of course, we don't spray for weeds around here. So we have all kinds of things growing. And we've got lamb's quarter and pig. Burdock. And- pig uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And pigweed and all this kind of stuff. And she's just going along. Here's Jane. She's just going along. She says, oh, this is almost ready to harvest. You know, this is... Um, Pigweed is a actually an ancient grain. Um, oh, amaranth, amaranth, amaranth. Okay. Or something? Yep. Okay. You're familiar That's a, with they it? grow for flowers nowadays. Yeah. Well, so anyway, so 
I, we have that growing out here. And she's like, oh, this is almost ready for harvest. I'm like, so what am I supposed to do with it? You know, and she's like, oh, you just use it as a grain, you know, just grind it up, whatever, dry it, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, yeah, we, last time we were here, we spotted some curly, what she call it, curly, curly something. And she says, so we were, we stopped alongside the road and oh. we're harvesting from the ditch. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I, curly, she call it curly burdock. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe the leaves curl. Yeah, or something on something or whatever. And she said, oh, yeah, it's real healthy for whatever, whatnot. And so she's like a real forager type person. I I've, mean, I've watched people on TikTok that are foragers and stuff like that. And yeah, the, the only thing I have about foraging from a ditch is I know our neighbors spray, spray the ditches for the county. You don't always know exactly what's on that. Yeah, been sprayed on yeah, it. Yeah, what has been sprayed on it. So that would be the only thing. That I would be a little... Because, see, you know, like, <laughs> burdock, you know, I don't... In town, I mm-hmm. don't have oh. burdock and stuff. Yeah. And I've thought, Carol has burdock. I should mm-hmm. go out there and dig because it's burdock root, I think. Yes. Yep. You that you the, want. Yep. You want the root. And so it's like, I know Carol's yep. got burdock Christine out there. Christine used to come out here and harvest burdock root off of our farm. Yep. I've got it out here. I've got chicory out here, which is a substitute for coffee. Oh, okay. If we ever run short on coffee. coffee. Yeah. yeah. You can, that's, I guess, women in the 40s used to do this during the, um, when the wars were going on, when oh. World War II was going on and they were rationed and everything. Um, oh. That's a, that's something I read, you know, on Facebook or whatever, you know, and that's like, oh, I'm like, well, I know we have chicory out here. I just don't know exactly what the plant looks like. I know what oh. it looks like now. But I was like, I need to research this and see if yeah. that's actually what, and yeah, we have chicory and, and the cows love it. A cows love chicory. Oh. Yeah. So we, we've got... Is it like catnip in their cat? Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but they do. They really do like it, but they don't like burdock. The goats do. Mm-hmm. But well, I would think to take the burdock root, and I need to research that of how to do it, but to freeze dry it. And then ah, yep. powder it mm-hmm. in your blender or food processor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. We need to do that soon. If we're going we to do. harvest it, yep. because um, it's going to freeze. Right. <laughs> well, so we're we'd not prob- be- yeah, we'd have to get it done in October because the ground you have until the ground freezes, mm-hmm. and that's probably November. Mm-hmm. You know, November yep. sometime. Yeah, when the frost starts sitting into the ground, then yep. we can't start moving. Can't moving. dig the dirt. Yeah, we can't move the dirt any longer. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I we've got other things out here too. I Rich calls it. We have one plant out here called. He calls it the toilet paper plant, as it's. It's got a really soft leaf on it, oh. so you could use it as toilet paper. <laughs> as long as it's not poison ivy or piece of <laughs> Yep, yep, but I mean, it is not. It's You touch it, and the, the leaves are like velvet. They're just really, really soft. Those are really... Whatever it's like lamb's ear. Um, no, it's mullen. Mullen, mullen, mullen. You have mullen? Yes, we do. I was watching an herbalist on TikTok, and I'm like, I've never seen mullen. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I, I'm not exactly positive. I think that's what Rich oh. called it. And it comes in. There's a big yellow stalk of flowers that comes out of the center of it. But yeah, we have that. We have we have wild um, oh geez, um, hemlock out here too. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, but you know we don't spray for anything. So. Yeah, we have well, see, plenty of thistles I... too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there any use for thistles, guys? Yeah, Let us know. I, yeah, it would be nice to know. Yeah, I have a few cows that will eat the flowers off of the I suppose they're the tender thistle. when they're... Yeah, but not all the cows will do that. They yeah. say you can train your cows to, to eat that, but they have to have, like, nothing else to eat. Oh, and that's well, they the only, have plenty to yeah, eat yeah, that's, here. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, but I do have a few cows that will pluck them off. Uh, best, the best animal for, for, um, for eating flowers, the blossoms off of thistle, is a donkey. Oh. When we had a donkey out here, our well, thistle right. population went way down. Oh, that's right. But, you used to have one yep, here. Yep, we had to get rid of him because he was getting too mean with the rest of the animals. I would never get an intact donkey again. Oh. He needs to be fixed or get a female. But I loved his hee-haw. I love that. I miss that. He'd greet you, hee-haw, you know. And the, oh, and his name was Donkey off of Shrek. Shrek. <laughs> But yes, so I have lots of lots of um, oh. wild stuff out here, and of course we have plantain. Yeah, yeah, and, and stingweed. Oh, we don't. Yeah, need... yeah, we got Stingy plenty of nettle. nettles nettles out here. But you know, my sister in law, she harvests nettles and makes yeah. tea out of it. Yes, yep. you can buy. I have bought it in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a pleasant tasting okay. tea. I see. I'm not a tea person, so um, it's not a tea that you'd sit there. Oh, I'm going to sit down and with a cozy cup of stinging mm-hmm. nettle tea. <laughs> no, it's more of a medicinal thing. It's good for you. You're going to drink it. Okay. 
And so it's like, yeah, there's, I have some other teas. It's like, these are good for you and you should drink. You know, it's cold and flu season. You mm. need to build up your immune system yeah. and stuff. Though yeah. I have some teas like that and it's like, ah. Uh. Yeah, see, I just... like dandelion, dandelion tea. Um, it doesn't taste bad. Um, it's better. It's more pleasant than stinging nettles. Okay, so dandelion tea, do you make that out of the root or do you make that out of the flower or the greens? Um, I have seen it both. I use a store-bought one now. Okay. I don't remember the brand, but it's medicinal. And so I have some of that and I've just, but I, that is one of my thing is that because I don't spray, we don't spray anything at our house. My neighbor does. My neighbor has her weeds. They have the Mm -hmm. nice lawn. Yep. Yep. And she sits and picks the weeds out of it. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a spot by my shed. My storage shed, garden shed, mm-hmm. whatever, that there is a slab of cement that used to be an antique. It was a garage back when there was antique cars. It used to be small enough. And so there was a slab, slab of cement that was for the walk-in door. Okay. And so, but now there's probably like two, three inches of dirt on top of it. Mm-hmm. And to have that removed would probably be hard. Okay. And so I considered planting, plantain, you know, digging it up getting rid of the grass that's there and there's mm-hmm. weeds there mm-hmm. and planting plantain and um, dandelions mm-hmm. thinking they would grow there on top of that piece of cement and four inches yep. of dirt. Yep. They probably would. And yep. so I'm considering doing this next year. Oh, okay. And so to har- harvest, because I've noticed that, you know, like some dandelions, they can, you probably have them out here where they get really long roots. Mm-hmm. Whereas, I have not, I probably have enough in my yard. I could dig them, <laughs> uh-huh. but I've never really taken the time to. No, neither have I. I know. I, I just read something about somebody using dandelion root to make coffee. You know, I keep thinking, how can it possibly taste like, I mean, even chicory. I'm like, how can it possibly taste, taste like coffee? Like coffee. Does it have the but caffeine? I don't know. But I thought, because you know, I... the thing is, is, you know, you won't know unless you try. Yeah. I'm but I don't, you. I don't know exactly what you need to do. With the root too. Yeah. Do you produce, have to dry it and yeah. then roast it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. you you make coffee with it, so to speak. Yeah. You know, or prep it to be that uh, would be another coffee res- bean supplement or whatever. Substitute. One of those nights watching TV, scrolling on your <laughs> <laughs> researching. Oh gosh, we got off topic there. Oh we yeah, we, we always. We're in- but anyway, <laughs> anyway. So so your customers, you have good reference and yeah. somebody to ask. Mm -hmm. questions Mm -hmm. as we're going down the road yep yep they're a nice resource and they're very free flowing with the information and stuff and so that's it's nice really nice to build that community Mm -hmm. of people that we can Mm -hmm. help each other Mm -hmm. and stuff we can get it's like we can go you can go hey i'm doing any any ideas this is my next project any ideas because anita is the one who told me about making um cucumber and zucchini chips yes the freeze dryer that's what the refrigerator pickup pickles that is what i want to do i, I want to freeze dry them to be like potato chips mm-hmm. to replace potato chips and so i have some that are spicy but then the ones i made the other night in the middle of the night um i did not put any hot pepper flakes in them so they will be just a pickle uh, just a pickle okay so now you also talked to me about freeze drying pickle juice and making yes. a powder yes that i follow that on one of the facebook groups is somebody said, so I thought in the ice cube tray, freeze it in chunks mm-hmm. and then put it on the tray, freeze dry it. We have to perfect that process. I'm mm-hmm. I, There's some little tricks, so I need to do some research. Okay. But then, yeah, they said they ground it up and, you know, made it into powder and put it on their popcorn. And I'm like, oh. And with my butter? Oh. Can you imagine how good that would probably popcorn be? popcorn is awesome with your butter on it. <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> No, I'm like I can make a meal out of that. Oh, I know the butter is so good. I mean, I make a big bowl of popcorn and then I put your butter on it with salt, and then sometimes I'll put nutritional yeast on it. See, I have nutritional yeast, and I keep forgetting to try it on my popcorn. I uh, yeah, because when you really get to the bottom of it, it's like it's got butter and nutritional. Yep. And I, like, I, yeah, 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 look your finger, look in your finger, yeah, and like, then I take a piece of popcorn and I run it around. Yep, the bottom of the bowl. Yep. You almost need to go pop some more so you can wipe the bottom of the bowl after you're done. 
oh yeah, our our, our butter is really good on popcorn. Yep. I, I've heard that from several people, yep. and I have to agree, it is really good. Yep, your so. it was good on bread, homemade bread. <laughs> we had that tonight on your homemade bread. Yep. So that was the yep, that was excellent. And I've got whipped cream. We're gonna have apple after, crisp. Yep, we'll have apple crisp after we're done with our our, our yap in here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are never done until we walk out yeah, the door. I know, I know. So that is probably it's going to be it. That's for tonight. probably is going to be it for tonight. So we got to get to our dessert yet. Yeah, we got dessert yeah, yet. Yep. Yeah. We got hungry husbands over there who probably want some yeah, too. Ground too. Thank you for listening to the Homestead Podcast's latest episode. Your hosts Carol Radke and Jamie Kappis are two gals homesteading. To learn more, go to twogalshomesteading.com or the Two Gals Homesteading Facebook page at facebook.com slash twogalshomesteading. Editing, audio production, and marketing of the Homestead Podcast is the responsibility of Media Trends X. The Homestead Podcast is an audio product of Media Trends X, a limited liability company based in Minnesota, USA. We'd like to give a special thank you to PicoSupply.com for sponsoring our podcast. So until next time. Put some keeper on it. <laughs> <laughs>